Winchester is directed by Michael and Peter Spearing. They directed Daybreakers and Jigsaw, and I do want to say right at the onset that there will be spoilers, so if you do not want to um, be spoiled by anything, and I'm going to put this in the title, so obviously if you clicked on it, you want to know. I'm going to put spoilers. I'm not going to say I'm going to spoil everything, but, you know, just spoilers right now, just saying it. So, of course, the Winchester household, famous, um, famous, you know, mansion of, like, a lot of spirits, one of the most haunted places in America. Um, <clears throat> and, of course, you know, just built with a bunch of crazy rooms, hallways to nowhere. All this stuff's like, why is this place built the way it is? Well, this movie attempts to answer some of those questions. Sarah Winchester, played by Helen Mirren, the great Helen Mirren, never really does any bad work. She's much better than this material, and not that the material in this movie is bad. But she's much better than this material. I think the only reason this probably got the wide release that it did is because of Helen Mirren, because otherwise, sorry, all due respect to any of the other cast members, this probably would have been a Netflix original. And something against Jason Clark, who plays Dr. Eric Price, who is in Everest, Zero Dark Thirty, and Terminator Genesis. I think two of those are a lot better than the other one. Uh, Sarah Snoo, of course, plays the uh, plays the niece of um, of Sarah, you know, Helen Mirren's character. And Sarah Snoo, if you're not too familiar with her, maybe you'll be familiar with her. You know, if I mention the movie Jezebel, I'm sorry for the flashbacks that I caused. Jezebel wasn't very good. Um, Sarah Snoo's character, her son, starts sleepwalking all of a sudden. She finds him in the very beginning of this movie, like within the first, like, you know, five, ten minutes, she finds him with a, you know, with a burlap-type sack on his face or whatever to hide his identity. She takes the sack off. He's got weird white eyes are all like, you know, like, you know, just all like this, but all white. What in the world is going on? What is happening here? Well, Jason Clark's character... Suddenly, you know, we cut to him, he's sleeping with a couple of various women, and it turns out as this movie goes on, you <clears throat> see that he has a lot of torment. He lost his wife, um, and his wife who had heard voices and had and had issues, and he wasn't able to save her. So as a doctor, even though like this is taking place in nineteen oh six, he you know, he's tormenting himself because he's unable he was unable to save her. What ends up happening is um, some employees at the Win at the Winchester Company are curious and actually scared about the uh, you know well being and the mental faculties of Sarah Winchester, of course, Helen Mirren's character. Can't, should she have majority share of the company? Has fifty one percent of the company you know left to her by her husband after her husband died? Can she you know should she really be controlling the company if she key, if she hides and if she's in you know hiding? And doing all, and you know, building this house and building all these weird rooms and everything. Why is she building all these rooms? So, Jason Clark's character <coughs> is sent there. They promise to pay off a lot of his debts. Okay, cool. Yeah, whatever. What could possibly go wrong? I'll do the. I'll do this and everything. Of course, the house turns out to be haunted. And right from the onset, he talks to one of the ghosts, and you can tell he's one of the ghosts. I mean, I, it's very, very obvious who it is. It's the guy with the weird Southern accent. Um. It's played by Iman Farron. Um, Iman Farron, at least I hope I pronounce that right. Relative newcomer. He's been a few... I, I looked up on IMDb. He's been in a few bit roles. I'm not too familiar with the guy. The guy did pretty well for what he was. Um, and there's various other stock characters and everything. A lot of crews is working on the house constantly, like almost day and night, like 24-7. 20, I mean, there's obviously shifts and everything that people do, but there's a lot of people working on the house. A lot of boards, like, you know, with 13 nails in them. Like, why in the world is this case? Why is the garden room cut off? Why are all these rooms cut off? Oh, and, you know, Sarah Snow's character says, you can only go into certain areas of the house unless my aunt says otherwise. Okay, cool, whatever. As things go on, of course, there are ghosts. I mean, there's a lot of jump scares. I only jumped once. They're really... This is one movie where I think the jump scares weren't even needed. You could have done it without the, you know, you know the, the kind of thing where they do with the music to get that going. Um, it turns out, of course, that the, you know, the ghost, the ghost servant, one of the servants that's, that's a ghost, is actually the evil spirit that is, you know, trying to take down the house. It's like he, he lost two of his brothers. His name, you know, play the character's name is Ben Block, of course, played by Iman, as I said. He 
he lost his two brothers in the war and took out a whole took out a whole bunch of people like using a winchester rifle to take out people at you know a cert, at at an area of the company or whatever killing 15 innocent people and then he got shot up by police well that was 20 years before this and now all of a sudden his his ghost is in there and he's there in plain sight and even though she's seen him other people haven't seen him so even though Sarah Winchester, you know, trying to build these rooms to get to, you know, appease these spirits and help ease their pain and apologize because she doesn't, she, she feels bad that this tool has been made. I mean, yes, obviously she's made money, but she feels bad, especially this, you know, this weapon that her husband has made is killing so many damn people. There's the usual jump scares and stuff like that and everything, and of course, Eric Price's wife um, ends up ends up basically helping him. He comes to grips with the fact that he needs to let go of the pain that he's the pain and the guilt that he's held, where he couldn't save his wife, and he felt bad that he couldn't save his wife, and he felt bad that he you tried to use a doctor's mentality instead of realizing, oh crap, I should have been paying more attention to my wife. I should have been paying better attention to her. Um, and believed her that maybe she wasn't crazy, that maybe this stuff was legit happening. There's a lot of ghosts, a lot of goofy stuff and everything, and there is one point where <clears throat> everything kind of goes from zero to 60. There's a few moments, like, where the, where the kid actually is possessed by Ben Block, um, you know, the, the evil one, and trying to, trying to kill Sarah. And there's some good stuff, and then of course, like this big, big earthquake. It ties right around the time the San Francisco earthquake in 1906 hits. Hence, why the house does what it does, and you know, gets all gets all like torn apart and everything. But it also has to do with spirits. So you have to wonder if this movie is having a way of saying, maybe it wasn't spirits, maybe it was the earthquake that caused all this damage to the house. Maybe it was never spirits. Maybe there were no spirits. But the thing is, is you know, it's pretty obvious, of course, when Sarah gets possessed and all this stuff. And there's all this stuff happening. It's a story of redemption for Eric Price, you know, for, you know, Jason Clark's character, Dr. Eric Price. It's a, it's a healing for Sarah Winchester. And everything is wrapped up, I don't want to say a nice, neat little bow, because there obviously are more evil spirits in the house. And the way it ends with more nails falling out of the whole thing does indicate a sequel but there's some good atmosphere to it. I'm not going to say it's a perfect movie by any stretch of the imagination. It has its flaws like, okay, these spirits are here and here and here. We can trap them in this room, but wait, all of a sudden they're not trapped in this room. It, it's, a, it's, a little bit, it's a little bit weird, but it's certainly not a bad movie. Would I recommend seeing it in theaters? Yes, I would recommend seeing it in theaters. Don't expect something with a ton of gore, though. That's the one thing about this movie. It didn't really have a ton of gore. I mean, it, it had some blood in it. And it obviously, you know, deserved the rain it got. But it had its, it, it had its moments and it had its shock and everything. And it had a, its visceral stuff with the ghost. It just wasn't necessarily, it, it wasn't as good as a Conjuring. It wasn't good as a Conjuring 2. And that's my personal opinion. It was very Conjuring-esque with the music and the mood and everything. And I'm not saying it was trying to copy it. The Conjuring certainly wasn't the most original movie ever as it, co as it copied um, quite a bit of other Haunted House movies that just put its own spin on it. And that's what Winchester does here. And these uh, Spirit Brothers certainly do well. They, they add a lot of good atmosphere, focus on some characters. Sure, some of the you know bit characters kind of get cast to the side. But they do a good enough job where it is worth watching. So I'm going to say... I'm going to say, you know, two and a half stars. I'll say two and a half stars. It, it's fair. I almost want to give it three, but I'm not sure I'm going to watch it again. But I will say this. It's, it's, it's very between two and a half to three stars. And it, it's enjoyable. It's an enjoyable movie. It's very simple at the end of the day with the story, but it's still enjoyable. Anyway, that's what I got to say. So did you guys enjoy Winchester? Let me know in the comments. Like, share, subscribe. It's been Real Honesty with John Rithlin. I'm John Rithlin, and I will see you soon.